Yeah, look at that. You can see the butterflies flitting about, every blade of grass, the flowers there. Um, even just like uh, the, the textures on all of the decaying architecture there, it all just looks so, so good. Welcome back to PlayStation Underground. What a privilege it is to be sitting here at Blue Point Games in Austin, Texas. I'm joined by Marco Thrush, the president of the company. Hi. Hey. And Peter Dalton, technical director on Shadow of the Colossus for PS4. Hello. Hey, hey, thanks for being here, guys. Well, rather, thank you for letting us be here. This is a, 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 quite a change for PlayStation Underground to be recording on location here. Uh, super excited to be seeing Shadow of the Colossus. Um, you can see already that this game just looks absolutely stunning. Such an upgrade from uh, the PS2 version and the uh, more recent PS3 version. Um, Marco, I'd like to start by talking to you just about the project and kind of how far the company has come. How, what, what's it like now working on this massive overhaul, this, this new version rebuilt from the ground up for PS4? It's, it's a great opportunity. Um, we're finally, over the different projects we've done over the years, finally grown to the point where we can finally take a project of this kind of scope on and, and actually do it justice. So it's, it's, it's really great. Cool. And I should mention that we have our, uh, our pal Russell here sitting on the floor next to us. He can't, he can't uh, be seen on the camera, but... Uh, sorry, Randall. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Randall is here. Uh, he's playing the game for us. He's piloting. Um, Whatever you call he, me is fine, just don't call me Shirley. <laughs> don't call you Shirley. Um, look, I've had one day to get everybody's name straight. I'm working on it. Uh, Randall is here and he's driving. He is the uh, producer on the project. And uh, I got that right, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Nailed uh, it. So, yeah, and uh, we, we had some great chats earlier. Um, he's going to uh, carry us forward to victory with no deaths, no stumbles <laughs> whatsoever. I'm going to make this game look absolutely perfect, Slow which it already play. does. Um, Peter, I'd like to talk a little bit about the technical side, and I think that you're a good person to talk about that. Um, this game is quite a, quite an upgrade from the original PS2 version of Shadow of the Colossus. How did we yeah. get from there to here? You know, I, I think it's been a lot of fun, yeah. and when we had the opportunity to remaster the original for the PS3, it was much more of just bringing up textures and resolutions on a few things. And we've gone to the point now where we are basically remaking uh, every single asset in the game. Uh, you look at the geometry and the detail that we've added to the environments and the atmosphere, it's a completely re-envisioning, uh, it's trying to stay true to the original uh, uh, remaster of the game. Um, from character animations to the physics to the water simulations yeah, yeah. to the particle systems. Yeah, look at that. You can see the butterflies flitting about, every blade of grass, the flowers there. Um, even just like uh, the, the textures on all of the decaying architecture there, it all just looks so, so good. See the waterfalls up there. Man, this looks incredible. So I think we're headed off to find, uh, find one of the Colossi. Which, which one are we headed to right now? <laughs> We're headed to Colossus 8. Colossus 8, so we're, we're a ways, what's this, about halfway through it's the game halfway, now? halfway, exactly. Yep. Cool. I, uh, I will shamefully admit that I didn't, I didn't make it this far when I played the game back on PS2. So I'm really looking forward to being able to experience this for myself and finally resolve one of my greatest gaming shames of never having finished Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> well, okay we're glad to me. give you that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we see we see Wander climbing these pillars here. Um, I remember hearing that the controls have been updated here. Uh, Marco, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, we offer multiple control schemes. Uh, we offer the original control scheme for the original player, mm -hmm. and uh, that matches the PS2 and PS3 version. And we have a new one, which we consider to be better suited to new uh, new players that have never played uh, any of the original games before. Mm -hmm. Um, it's more traditional uh, button mappings. In addition to that, all of the modes also received additional improvements to um, behavior of mounting aggro. Um, I mean, there are so many small details you could list. I mean, Peter, like, what, what do you think are some of the most obvious ones? Bow aiming. Uh, when you shine the sword on your light, making sure camera orientation, 
and such are taken into consideration. Uh, just minor touches and tweaks that um, the, the original didn't possess, but just makes the game feel a little more fluid as a, yeah, as a player. Yeah. There's a lot of an animation improvements done to the player package too to get rid of pops and harsh transitions between animation and motions. Yeah. How tempting was it to go in and uh, further simplify the controls or add more modern niceties like being able to move around while aiming the bow and things like that? So any of the changes you pretty much just listed would be changes that would dramatically affect the way the game played. Mm. Our intent was never to change the way the game played. We didn't want to affect the difficulty of the game. Um, ideas such as removing a grip meter or allowing you to aim while uh, move while aiming the bow to us would have been like those were actually items specifically we discussed, but oh, yeah. there were items that we, we discounted because they would just change the way you play the game too much. And we didn't want to 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 affect original players of the game to that kind of degree. We wanted to maintain the original intent of the game. I think a great example is if you look at modern games these days, you can run and climb and grab onto walls and parkour with little thought, with just uh, directional input on the on the joystick. One of the key aspects of this game is actually like holding R2 in order to hold and grip and that sense of tension that that yeah. brings. And to simplify and remove that would really lose an important essence of the original game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there are some out there who would call you uh, blasphemers for changing the game at all, right? Where, where do you draw the line? Uh, it's pretty difficult. Um, there's no way you can attempt a project of this scope and not make somebody unhappy. Sure. We're, we're trying to do our best to minimize the people we do make unhappy by providing choices, like for example, the classic mode for the controls. Um, well, I feel like this is, is going to make a lot of people very happy. <laughs> yes, I hope so, I hope so. Right? A lot of people seem to be happy about it already from, from what we've seen. Uh, the game was only just revealed at E3, I think it was, right? It was at E3, And yeah. we're already, I mean, we're already so, so close to, to seeing a final product here. Oof. Okay, we got you got this. this. You got this. You good. You good. <laughs> oh man, I'm getting caught up in this Colossus battle. Oh my goodness. I love the way that the um, the symbols on the on the Colossus light wander when he's on top of them. Yeah, it's it's the little touches. I mean, like the glowing legs themselves, they light up the environment too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, so that's the kind of stuff that you don't really like until you actually bring the game up on a PS4 and improve the quality of the graphics. A lot of those kind of details are things that just naturally are obvious that they're lacking. Sure. You, you play the game and it's like, man, it looks really weird that there's this bright glowing thing, but there's no light coming from it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of small touches that were things we didn't actually originally even think about that <laughs> you had to actually get to the point of the game looking to this level mm -hmm. to be able to even realize the things that were missing. Yeah, well, I think that that was even the reveal trailer at E3. That was maybe the most goosebump uh, 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 inducing moment was that final shot of the panning camera around with him lit by the symbol and then that final stab and then the cut to black. Oh man, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. So good, I'm getting tingly. Um, tell me a little bit more about some of the other technical improvements. Let's talk about the PS4 Pro features. We're actually playing this on PS4 Pro right now. We're seeing this game running uh, at a 4K resolution. This is a cinematic mode, I believe it's called. This is our cinematic mode that we offer. Uh, we did a lot of evaluations looking at different uh, 4K, 4K rendering techniques. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we found that given the atmosphere of this game and uh, the, the softness that the game's trying to bring in the mood, we implemented uh, a 440p uh, temporal alias 1440. 1440, I'm sorry. <laughs> All over the place. <laughs> uh, temporal aliasing. Is temporal word. aliasing uh, of sampling. And, and so that gives it the, the, a much nicer feel and, okay. uh, and really helps with the image quality at the temporal end. Temporal aliasing. I feel like I heard that uh, term thrown, thrown around when uh, we were hearing about Ratchet and Clank. They used something similar, didn't yeah. they? Uh, they uh, did. Our, our technique for, for 4K rendering is very similar to um, the Retro and Clank method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a, yeah, it's a temporal super sampling is essentially what it is mm, in this yeah. case. Well, it looks absolutely stunning. Um, there's also a performance mode. What, what does that entail? 
So performance mode allows us to hit a targeted 60 FPS mode. Oh, okay. Uh, it allows you to have greater, you know, it, it just feels a little bit smoother for the gaming purists that can uh, appreciate an increased frame rate, can uh, appreciate the extra motion fidelity and stuff that you get when you're battling the Colossi. Um, and so, it's, so it just, it's just a little extra punch to put the cherry on does top. It, does it feel weird playing this game at a higher frame rate? Or uh, does that, because I feel like this was, you know, so many people remember this game in its original form. And obviously there's the, you know, cinematic mode, which is kind of the, you know, most beautiful way to play it. But. To me, I think it depends on, on the person you ask, mm. which is exactly the reason why we actually give you the option to play either at the original frame rate targeting 30 or the new frame rate at the higher performance mode targeting yeah. 60 because some people will always prefer running at 30 FPS. Sure. You, if you give them 60 FPS, they will be unhappy. <laughs> then there's other people, you only give them 30 and they want 60. We yeah, give them yeah. the best of both worlds. Like we have other options in the game for the exact same reason, being able to adjust the intensity of motion blur. Mm -hmm. Some people like motion blur, some people don't. So we always try to give people the choice Cool. So how much bigger of a project is this than when you remastered the game for PS3? On Lots of thinking happening here. It's a completely different exponential scale. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It's, yeah. Uh, the original project was done with um, two QA on, internal on our end. We had, majority of the team was programmers, and we had one artist touching up some textures. Mm. And this is and on this team completely rebuilt. It's completely rebuilt from scratch. Every single asset, uh, high-res scopes created, normal maps baked down, PBR textures created. Man, yeah, so how... Animation, how physics systems. Animations updated, oh, wow. brand new... Water sims. Brand new particle systems created for every single particle effect. New but, particle systems added. Yeah, but obviously you want it to evoke the same feeling of the original game. You don't want it to feel different. You want it to feel the same, but but better? Like, it's such a weird, like, fine line you guys have to walk. You, you want to take the original game and pretend that this team existed now, making this game mm. for the PS4. Mm. Like, what would they have done? Yeah, yeah. I think at the same time, when people play the original, that uh, you have this nostalgia and you have these memories and your mind is filled in the gaps. When you look at a PS2 game and you're playing it, just because they've got a flat plane, you assume that, well, this is where the grass area is. Oh, yeah. Here's the hillside. And your, your mind sort of pieces it together. With the level of fidelity of graphics that we're hitting today, you can't just assume the player will make it up or, or, or piece in the gaps by themselves. And now it's our ability to go through and actually expose that and actually bring it to life. Hmm. Cool. So now we're wandering around the planes here. Um, so we did see that. That was the eighth Colossus that we wrapped up there. I think that was, yeah. Nice work on that, Randall. Thank you very you much. Right this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that is uh, Shadow of the Colossus on PS4, running on a PS4 Pro in the beautiful new cinematic mode. Uh, Marco, Randall, uh, um, Peter, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Is there anything else that uh, you wanted to say to the fans uh, leading up to the launch of Shadow of the Colossus? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, I hope you enjoy uh, the blood and tears and, and, sweat blood and, <laughs> and sweat we put into this game. Um, we're huge fans of the game ourselves. Uh, we hope you appreciate what we try to do for you to maintain this game for the new generation. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm so excited to play this for myself. Uh, thank you for tuning into PlayStation Underground, and we'll see you next time. PlayStation.